Hello, 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 the RD Labs. This is Ken here. Hope this is reaching you well. Sunday is 10.30 here in Vienna. So let's get straight to it. So basically, this is a very quick one. Just going to do a very quick analysis of a lot from a macro aspect in terms of the main um, large cap assets within the crypto space. And then really going down in terms of what my views are regarding the next few months and what's really going to drive this whole ecosystem. So first and foremost, as you can see on my screen, we have the Ethereum uh, chart on a daily time frame trading view. So we've based, what we've basically seen is we've seen that Ethereum actually tested those lows of about $1,700 level. And we've now started to see a steady climb up um, a, a correction, which really held, let's say, at this 200 uh, moving average level. And we're now looking to test the next resistance of about 2,900. So there's a lot of things happening within the Ethereum ecosystem that I'm extremely bullish about. The first thing is obviously the EIP 1559, which essentially really aside from changing the whole fee auction structure, the ultimate aim is to burn the base fee, right? So ultimately, this would actually make Ethereum economy more a deflationary over time. So this is going to have and this should obviously increase the value of the price. Yes, and provide some extreme phenomenal opportunities in this space. So if we just pull up, just took a screenshot here. So Ethereum Software Solutions consensus basically estimates that the annual supply change will be minus 1.6 million ETH. Um, so over this whole period and at current prices, this equates to burning of 3.2 billion in Ethereum, which will essentially reduce the annual supply rate by 1.4%. So in addition to that, there'll be the proof of stake, which will essentially will be launching um, on the mainnet for the Ethereum 2.0 sometime in 2022. It should have come out this year, but it's been delayed. So there's an incredible amount of value that's taken place. And then when you add to the, the, the layer two aspect regarding optimism, and that's looking to have their mainnet this month, you've got Arbitrum that have the mainnet for developers, but also for uh, for, dap, for dApps this month also coming out. And then you've got the various interesting roll-ups. It just shows that there's a lot going on uh, within this specific space. Now, in terms of the EIP 1559, currently it's due um, for the mainnet to be to commence later this month. It's currently going through the testnet at the moment. And what I'll basically do is just pull up this link. So this basic link is the watch to burn. So you can actually check the total fees burnt right now, currently. And this is on the testnet. Um, but then later this month is going to move over to the mainnet. So there's 89,148 ETH currently burnt. So the price now is probably about 190 uh, million um, dollars worth that's burnt. So which is absolutely phenomenal. So it's so interesting to track and see that how this is moving uh, in terms of the whole process regarding the blocks. So this is, for me, something where you're looking from a longer term horizon where you're looking to take positions, not financial advice, do your own research. But I, I truly believe the way this price is moving, especially with so much is going on with the Ethereum 2.0, with obviously the base fee um, and on obviously the layer two aspect, it really gives this platform that Ethereum should be within the next probably a year or so, at least about six to eight eight thousand dollars so we're looking probably about a forex at least in the price within the next year or so um and this is probably for me this is still undervalued in terms of where this is going and this then bridges the gap in terms of this whole flipping in terms of a higher market cap for ethereum than bitcoin so talking about bitcoin let's move over there to see what's basically happening where it is right now so essentially bitcoin has now been so let's just pull this here. So if we just pull up, so this is a Bitcoin, I'll go to a daily time frame so we can have an overview of what's currently happening. Bitcoin essentially has been trading in this range from about 19th of May, and it's been just moving between 42,000 to about 28,000, right? It's about 17,000 range, um, and it's just been moving sideways. This is it seems that it's the accumulation phase that's taking place. There's obviously a lot has happened from a macro view in terms of Chinese miners, uh, China banning miners. So there's a lot of the relocation that's taking place. The hash rate has had a huge impact, uh, clearly. And this has really pushed uh, the price to the downside. 
what we are now starting to see from in terms of the price points, we should be looking at a potential test of this 41,000, hopefully within the next couple of weeks or so. And if we can break through that, we'll be looking at a downward trend line resistance of about 49, 50,000 level. So the reason why I'm extremely confident is, number one, if you take a look at the Bitcoin network hash rate, we've seen that that low, that spike down around the 27th of June, but it's now starting to correct and recover. So it's at 98.71 at the moment in terms of the hash rate. So it's actually stabilizing, which is very, very positive. And it shows that um, miners are relocating to places like Kazakhstan, North America, you know, place, place like Texas, that's really now be becoming a hub, right, for people to now set up um, their infrastructure so they can actually start mining. And really, it's becoming a decentralized uh, a way that miners can now um, really look at various locations that they can be able to set up their equipment and start mining. And that's extremely positive because you don't want a central point of failure in terms of China where a large proportion of the miners were actually taking place. So that's moving elsewhere and that's obviously positive. Number one for the hash rate in terms of consolidation, hopefully a movement higher, and then essentially for the price. If we take a look at the pure multiple, so this is quite an interesting stat. And the pure multiple essentially is the daily coin issuance divided by the moving average over 365 days. So what we can basically see here is a metric which uh, looks at the supply side of Bitcoin's economy, Bitcoin miners and their revenue essentially. So Bitcoin miners are sometimes referred to as the compulsory sellers due to their need to cover fixed costs. So of mining hardware in a market where price is extreme volatile. So how this essentially works is um, this is basically going back all the way to about 2010, I would say. So every time we see, and, and this blue is indication of the price of Bitcoin over that period, and, and this red is basically the, the pure multiple. So what we've seen is any time that this pure multiple actually reaches this range, as we can see here, okay, so this horizontal here, this range level, price tends to move higher. So it provides a buying opportunity or an interest of fair value for people to take control. We saw this in 2000 and 2011, price was about $2.51, it started to move higher. We saw this around 2000, January 2015, price was around $250. We saw a steady move higher to the upside. We saw it again breach and test this level around 2018. We saw a decline in the price where it tested about 3,800. And then instead a steady move to the upside. We also saw this in May 2020. So there was a spike here in March. Yeah, March 2020. Um, so that was the huge drop that we saw, right? March 2020. And then it started to move higher. We also saw this in May 2020. 20 yep around there 2020 and a continued move we then now saw this print where the price had hit in in june the 27th so this is about a week ago now let's just pull up my my time here so this is probably about yeah about a week ago where we saw the pure multiple actually breached this range again and based on this specific statistics it's showing that this is presenting another buying opportunity. Now, take this with a grain of salt. You obviously want to add this with other errors that you're looking at in terms of formulating a plan, but this is giving a, another higher conviction in terms of what's happening uh, and where we currently see this whole price moving to. So uh, that's the whole situation in terms of Bitcoin. So I'm extremely bullish with BTC. I'm extremely bullish with Ethereum. Uh, pr prior to that, I was actually moving a lot into stables just because of what was happening with the mining and this massive sell-off. But I'm now having a lot of confidence that this is now presenting an interesting buying opportunity for a break um, above those levels. If you pull up Matic, so Matic is a layer two, um, only native layer two option within the ecosystem. Uh, we're seeing a lot of movement of a lot of projects, Ava, Compound, move it, looking to move or have already moved over to um, having their token on, on Matic, the ecosystem. So we've actually seen where price is literally now started to consolidate. It's broken through this downward trend line from a technical aspect. And we should really start to see opportunities where the price could really start moving higher. 
I am looking at the first test of the one dollar twenty five cents, um, and then if it can break through that, we should be looking at the one dollar seventy, and then sky's the limit as the price moves over. So just giving you a quick heads up, um, there's phenomenal opportunities now taking control. It's extremely important that you really look at diversifying over areas, not just from an aspect of what's happening from a technical point of view, but seeing what's going to fuel the specific prices in terms of the macro, in terms of development, in terms of uh, infrastructure that's taking place. And position yourself not just from a shorter term horizon, i.e. one week, two week, but plays that could last over a few years. This is where you're going to see some phenomenal growth, right? So that's where we am. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to add these details in the description and I'll be back with you with another one.